next drink. <laughs> Let's make a Caperinia. This is the polar opposite. I was right, see? Haha! -ha! When I said at the beginning, when at the beginning, <laughs> when he, when I saw the limes going in, I was like, it's a Caperinia. Haha! <laughs> do I know what I'm talking about? Or do I know what I'm talking about? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hello and cheers! Welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren, I am a bartender, and today I am going to be reacting to how to drink the best drinks he's ever had. I'm really excited for it. In order to celebrate, I brought with me my espresso martini. Um, it is actually huge. Like, it's massive and very strong. Um, there is a little bit of coffee in there because you need coffee for an espresso martina. This is actually a Turkish coffee that I used. Um, but it, it, it's a lot of Tito's. It's a lot of Kahlua. It's a lot of creme de cacao. I like to dress it up a little bit. There's some chocolate bitters in there. Um, yeah, we have fun. We're going to have fun today. And he's going to teach me all sorts of great things. I may or may not take notes. So... Without any further ado, let's learn how to make some drinks. Best drinks I've ever had on the show, and that these are, I'm saying these are the best drinks I've ever had on the show, and that these are my favorite drinks. But anytime you answer that question, you're going to come up with a different answer. So let's just say that these are my favorite drinks today. So the first thing I thought when he started dropping all the limes in was like a Camparina. <laughs> like, Camparina? I can never say it right. Drink. I had it for the first time on the show. Ooh. And I made some minor substitutions off the cuff. Mainly, instead of dry vermouth, I used Lillet Blanc, which is actually closer to a Blanc vermouth. It's uh, sweeter, but white vermouth. I've looked into it. I have seen a lot of people say that the dry vermouth that you see reprinted so many times is probably a misprint or a typo or mm. somebody misspoke or something like that because the drink is so much better with a Blanc vermouth. I've tried it with a dry vermouth. It doesn't work. The other thing is this drink usually calls for white rum. At the time, I happened to have a Ron Santiago 11 year from Cuba, which I cannot get now. Couldn't really get it then. I think a light rum is fine here. I think there's a lot that would work. This is kind of a, a, a Manhattan type drink. Okay. It's a cocktail, it's a stirred drink. Okay, I was like, a Manhattan, but you said rum. <laughs> I was like, Manhattan, what? But no, I was just like, I, I really appreciate it when there's like a thing from Cuba that you weren't supposed to have, but you managed to get it anyway. I had a really nice Cuban cigar once. It was huge. I had to share it <laughs> with like five friends. It was crazy. It benefits. In I was not allowed to have that thing. Something that's a little bit mellowed, has a little bit more character. You can really showcase rum with this drink. And I am thirsty, so let's make Woo! I'm gonna use an ounce and a half. I love when he rum. sings. I've never heard him do that. Yes, it is uh, quote unquote, not the correct rum, but it will be delicious. Three quarters of an ounce of our Lillet Blanc, half an ounce of dry curacao. Oh, okay. Now this drink calls for a bar spoon of grenadine. Doesn't really add up to much in the flavor. From reading about this, that the reason it's there is to add color to the drink that would have been made. I mean, that makes a sense. Uncolored rum. Nonetheless, I'm gonna put it in because it says to put it in there. And who am I to really argue, but there you go. Let's get a little ice. It's fancy grenadine. Give that sucker a stir. I don't normally chill my glasses, but I should. Yeah, I should too. Pull an orange Oof. peel. I love chilled glasses. El Presidente. Oh, okay. What a damn joy of a drink. Okay, just so you all know, at some point in the very near future, I'm going to be reconfiguring my setup a little bit. I might be able to actually make some of these drinks with him. If y'all would be interested in a sort of extra special day wherein we do make some of these drinks, go ahead and let me know. I think it would be fun. You'd get to see uh, like kind of what I do and you know, my a little bit more of my thoughts on it. So if y'all would be interested in something like that, go ahead and let me know because it's something that I could think about when it comes to setting up uh, the, new, the new space. So. I adore this drink. It really showcases the rum. Here, we're, we're pulling up all of these woodsy kind of notes, this 
mellow, rounded off and sweetened kind of oaky hmm. flavors. Some of that is coming from the Lillet. Some of that is definitely coming from the rum. You could use, I think, a lot of different rums here. I do think this drink, it showcases rum. Why use a brash and unaged kind of rum when you could use Why? something that's got a little bit of salt in its beard, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. The curacao and the twist, of course, they all kind of work together and you actually get to this new flavor that to me uh, brings to mind like cherry wood before you think, oh, but that's the grenadine. Grenadine is pomegranate. Maybe that's a factor, but I don't think it's a large factor. Mm. Absolutely one of my favorite drinks of all time. And it was such a surprise when I made it on the show because I'd never had one before and I made it. I was like, oh yeah, my God, tentacle. it is glorious. But I've never been asked for that. Respect like this because I have heard that if you make it with the, the dry vermouth and such, you won't find, people don't like it that much. It's not that popular. I want to yeah. pause today and let's let you know that today's episode of How to Drink is brought to you by you, actually, by the patrons oh, on my me. Patreon. If you love this show and you would like to see it continue and would prefer to see it with fewer advertisements, you might want to check out my Patreon. Over on my Patreon, I have ad-free versions of all episodes of How to Drink and certainly supporting the show through Patreon makes it a lot easier for me to say no to advertisers when they want to be on the show. Uh, additionally, you will get access to our private Discord server, which is a robust and fun community there's all kinds of great things. There was a truck over there. on there. I'm in there bouncing ideas for episodes off of you guys and commiserating about the state of affairs on YouTube. Fair. It sucks. The state content, of affairs is bad. Uh, videos, things that aren't over here, little vlogs, little looks behind the scenes, all that stuff. Use the link in the pin comment below or up here in the corner. Check out my Patreon. Uh, see if any of those subscribership levels work for you. And if they do, I hope to see you in the Discord. Thank you. Okay, great. So these drinks are going. You can go check him out too. Or just the way that I wrote them up. His the link for his video will be in the description box on my video, and then you can always go and check his stuff out. This next. I recommend you do it. He's cool. One of the two drinks that I often give as my answer for what's your favorite cocktail, the improved whiskey cocktail is just so hmm. good. It Interesting. Is a cousin to the old fashioned and a sibling to the Sazerac. Dave Wonderich posits that actually the Sazerac is a specific iteration of an improved whiskey cocktail. Oh, interesting. This version is from, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going off of memory here, the 1862 Jerry Thomas Bartender's Guide. It's the way I always make it. Old, it is a okay, lovely drink. wow. If you haven't had one, you owe it to yourself to eventually have one. It's a life-changing drink. This is a drink that will set you on a path of pursuing okay. perfection in cocktails. Start with the two ounces my... of rye. All right, I'm going to be, I'm writing this one down. I love whiskey and I want to try it. So two ounces of rye. rye. You can use the rye of your choice. You need a quarter okay. ounce of maraschino and a quarter ounce Point. of this goes a long way. Yes, it freaking it does. Effect on the flavor. This is a potent little magical modifier. A quarter ounce of simple. There you go. Two dashes of Boker's bitters. There you go. Could you use Angostura? Sure. Will it affect the outcome of the drink? Absolutely. Will it be? <laughs> Absolutely not. It'll be just a slightly different drink. If you throw Peixot in there, it's going to start to be a lot more like a Sazerac. Oh, almost everywhere but the glass. That's how it goes. And strain away. And that's it. There you have an improved whiskey cocktail. Uh, by the way, wow. you can serve this on the rocks or up. You can do it either way. Improved. I kind of like it this way because it's a, it's a little more whiskey. refined. And, and also because, you know, it sets it apart from an old fashioned of which it is a very close relation. It gets okay. yes, it's... with a twist of lemon. Ooh, okay. I'm right, like I said. I strongly encourage you to use lemon and not orange. I'm feeling particularly uncreative today with my garnishes. So we're just going to do a little notch. Okay, bow cool. Tie kind of action. And there you have it. The improved That's really cocktail. cute. Quite possibly my favorite. I have a friend who's like, we're trying to teach him. Well, a co-worker. He's new to bartending and he keeps trying to put like lime in the whiskey drinks. And we're like, no, <laughs> and use lemon. Lemon or orange usually is what goes in the whiskey. I like, I don't know. I don't know if either, I don't, I can't think of any whiskey drinks off the top of my head that use lime. Usually if lime is the citrus is going into a drink, usually it's a clear liquor. Like, Again, I cannot think of a time where lime is used where it's not clear unless it's like you're using a tequila gold or something, which 
you know. So, but like we keep trying to, it's like, no, no, stop putting lime juice in this like, like whiskey. Th- it's not going to taste the way you think it's going to taste. Because like lime and lemon, like you wouldn't think they're too different, but it can really, really affect the flavor. Favorite drink of all time. Let's find out if that still remains true. Oh, shit. I forgot a vital ingredient here, which is a rinse of absinthe. Oh, oh, I don't have that. All right, here we go. Now, an improved whiskey heart. Rinse of absinthe. Stop the world and melt with you. That drink, man, every time I have one of these, it like awakens in me a mental fire. Just (sighs) like, why can't I be this creative, this genius? The combination of flavors in here is grunts. <laughs> I like the little, the little like he just grunts. He's he's lost the ability to speak because this drink is so damn good. <sighs> I want to try it. the The biggest issue I have with a lot of the stuff on this channel is that I have so many freaking liqueurs and mixers. It's kind of ridiculous how many liqueurs and liquors and stuff I have. Um, and yet there's always more that like, he just pulls out these random things and I'm like, I don't, Boker's bitters. It's like, I don't have Boker's bitters. I've got lavender bitters. I've got Ango bitters. I've got chocolate bitters. I've got black walnut bitters. I've got pecan bitters. I got peach bitters. I got celery bitters. I have seven different kinds of bitters in my home bar. And yet, yet another kind of, I I will like die on the hill that bitters are so great and you need them. But I'm just saying, I've got so many different types of mixers and liqueurs and things of that nature. And yet, I can never ever make all of the drinks that he's made because... Because there's, he's got like, ugh, it's ridiculous. Anyway. So perfected and perfected even to the point where like you could tweak it it's perfect it doesn't mind if you fuck with it a little bit if you did a little more maraschino a little more you could change your bitters out you could make some tweaks okay. for your own personal change taste. it will still be perfect there's That's probably nice. a few things that are sacrosanct i think the twist of lemon and the rinse of absinthe shouldn't be touched but Damn. my god <laughs> what an amazing accomplishment this drink is it is a perfect union of its components right you get this opening note of this spiced rye, these baking spices, this like banana bread, you know, like that, maybe not banana bread, but I feel like you should be able to pick up what I'm, I'm getting at here. That kind of like you come out of your bedroom and somebody's mm. baking something for Christmas and it hits your nose. Not really, because that never happened in my life. But if you can imagine it did in a <laughs> shot in the 90s on that. Oh, this is very, yep. Stock. That one where they blow out the background a little bit and it's got a little bit of grain and the kid, you got the feet coming down the hallway and he smells it and it's so good. It's so nostalgic. That's what that taste is, the rye. And then that, okay. in bed with the maraschino. I like the- and The maraschino has this- nut- Phrasing. Mildly sweet note of, of woodsiness, this woodsiness and the rye and they all, God, they get together so good. And what do okay. they? is elevated by this twist of lemon, this bright ah, kind of note that's over the top, and it's like a chord. The three flavors right off the front form kind of okay. a, I don't know, like a suspended seventh or something. I'm not in <laughs> music theory, but one of those- <laughs> No idea what that means. The one that makes you give the money to the church. It <laughs> feels holy when you taste this. Thing. <laughs> And it's, it's just the right amount of sweetness, the, the simple and the matter. <laughs> this drink will make you want to pay money to God. <laughs> you got this root of bitterness from the Bokers, okay, which brings with it, I don't know, what is that that note? It, it, there is anisette there, but you're I know that's in the Bokers, but you're also getting it from the absinthe. I mean, tough to put your fingers on it, but it does ground it in this earthy kind of bitterness, this root, this maybe a touch of gentian in there, just like a... Uh, and then... The ah. final thing that hits you, and it does arrive late, is this lingering tremolo high Tremolo, note. good word. Ah. So many like singing things in this uh, video. I know it's been a while for me. I have not reacted to a singing video in a while. I'm sorry. They're coming. I promise I'll do more of them. I just, it's been a minute. I'm sorry. I just like, for whatever reason, 
the when I like react to music, it's always like I like go through so many different emotions when I react to songs and it's like I just for whatever reason it always has to be the last thing I film in a day because once I've done that I'm like you know what I'm done I've I've done my work for the day I can't possibly have any more reaction in me like <laughs> so I know it's been a while since I've done like a a bunch of music reactions um so sorry if y'all are waiting for those I will be do I'm not stopping them I'm not I promise Anyway, just sings out this one note that lasts for so Saliri's long. demise. Who's Saliri? A drop of absinthe. The death. Who's Saliri? Absinthe, the rinse. It provides this final note in drinks where you do that that just lingers so so long. I think that you will fall in love with cocktails from this. Start with the shower, more approachable. Quickly graduate to this, and then I think you will understand. There's an artistry here. <sighs> Truly scrumptious lesson. Scrumptious lesson. I like that. Hello, Lauren from the future here. Excuse my slightly haggard appearance. I have just gotten off of work. The thing is, I really wanted to try this drink. <laughs> he got me really, really curious about it and he talked it up so much. So I was like, I have to give it a try. Um, so uh, at work today, I went and I have made myself a little quasi cocktail um, here. Uh, ignore this red stuff here, that's red paint. I'm working on Halloween decorations and I got it all over me apparently. Um, point being, I have with me enough for two of these elevated whiskey cocktails, right? Um, I'm a little bit worried about it for multiple reasons. Uh, one of them being, I don't really like simple syrup in my old fashions. Another reason being I'm not a big fan of cherry. <laughs> like, why did I decide I wanted to try this again? And then the third reason I'm worried about it is because I don't have absinthe. I called three different stores today. None of them had absinthe. None of them had even heard of absinthe, which worried me that the liquor stores didn't. So what I did was I bought Malort. Um, I have never bought Malort before. I'm a little salty that I had to. Um, he wanted us to do a absinthe rinse. Um, I don't have the little spray bottle or whatever, but what I do have is the ability to just pour a little bit in there and give it a little bath. We're going to give it a little Malort bath. Um, this is what I do for a lot of um, like martinis as well. You just pour something into a glass. You sort of swirl it around a little bit, get it on them sides, get it on the bottom. It just sort of gives a little bit of flavor to the glass itself, which in turn gives you just a hint of a flavor in the cocktail. Pour it out. Um, it, yeah, you don't have to go crazy with, with it at all. Um, but the reason I'm using the Lort is because it, like absinthe, okay, smells all right, uses, uh, uses wormwood. Like that's the main ingredient. Um, or like a major, major ingredient. So because both use wormwood, ab like absinthe and malort, I I've never actually tried absinthe. I assume it's similar. Um, maybe I'm just gonna give it a little stir. Stir, 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 stir. Um, I am going to try it both ways. So this glass did not have any absinthe or wormwood anything in it no more lord in this one and this one has the malort rub okay and here is the lemon it looks green but it's not it's just my green screen i've got my little paring knife everyone always freaks out about the way i cut stuff so i'm gonna be kind of circumspect here. Just gonna give it a little wink. See, this is why I kind of want a uh, a bigger area, so that way I can kind of like show you a little bit more. Like, there I squeezed it in. I'm gonna roll it around the rim there. Drop. Okay, let's do it again for the one with absinthe in it. This knife sucks. All of our knives, I think, are in the 
the wash right now. Okay. So this is the one that's got the extra little bit of flavor. Little pop. Okay. So I'm going to just try. I'm going to try. <laughs> I just wanted to try. Okay, here I go. I, um, I mean, just immediately, I can smell the lemon. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. I, I like the sweet notes of it more than I usually do. Oh, that could be dangerous, boo. That could be really dangerous. Okay. I don't have any water or anything. It's fine. Um, all right. Now, this is the one that has the absinthe. So he said, he said that the absinthe is key. It's a key factor. So this is how it's supposed to taste. Well, kind of. We'll see. Okay, that is a little bit different. Not a lot. I think the rinse. Oh, there. Oh, it's it's different in the back. Okay. Okay, it wasn't right away. So I think if I'd done like the spritzing thing, um, it definitely would have hit that a little bit first. And it would have been like, oh, immediately like there's a, it's, it's a very bitter sort of uh, aftertaste, which is interesting. Not bad. I, I do like this drink. It is not as dangerous for me as the other one would be just because like that surprising sort of bitter note there at the end would uh, get me. That one would get me. Um, and I'd be like, oh, okay, that is weird. But yeah. Oh, that's really different. If you let it kind of just sit there on your tongue for a minute. Okay. All right. Well, I have tried the Elevated Whiskey Cocktail now. I do like it. Um, again, though, I'm usually such a purist when it comes to good whiskey. So if it's good whiskey, I kind of tend to like it just either on the rocks or neat. I don't like to... Or sometimes I'll throw in, like, some fun bitters. Um, like, some pe pecan bitters or, like, black walnut bitters. Something like that. Just to give it a little... Mm, a little kiss of something extra. Um, this is a lot of work to go into a cocktail that, for me, that I would make on my own. But it did taste quite good. I'm glad I got to try it out. If you would like me to do a little bit more of this kind of thing, like trying out his cocktails, again, let me know. Like, I'm, I'm more than willing to do it. Um, they would just have to be, for sure, like weird little inserts like this after so that I would know what I have to go and buy. Um, but yeah. All right. So I've tried the cocktail, and I'll see you all in the next one. Or I'll tell you back in the show where I'm about to be oh so correct about something soon. Bye. See you later, or in a second before. You know what I mean. On to the next drink. <laughs> Let's make a caperinia. This is the polar opposite. I was right. See, haha. -ha! When I said at the beginning, when at the beginning, <laughs> when he, when I saw the limes going in, I was like, it's a caperinia. Haha. <laughs> do I know what I'm talking about? Or do I know what I'm talking about? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. He better use cachaça for it. If he doesn't make it with cachaça, he's not doing it right. Just so you know. It's the exact opposite. This is a rustic busted broken down drink that uses a funky unaged liquor it is unrefined very very simple barely even strained you know so to start a caperinia we need a lime we're going to cut it in yes you do eighths. put all of that right into your shaker mm -hmm. this drink can be made with granulated sugar or with simple i happen to just not have any granulated sugar in reach i might have done it that way it's better with granulated There's sugar really nothing wrong with using simple in it i think it's more i go down i go say. there's nothing wrong with using granulated sugar in it they're both very very good in my it's a brazilian it's Bra it's brazil's like national drink and i was taught to make it by a brazilian um so i'm gonna go with what he told me You've met him if you're watching the Jacanime channel, by the way. Uh, Alec and I are currently watching Black Clover. Um, and we've watched, we're watching some other stuff on Patreon as well. But I'm just saying, I'm going to have some thoughts <laughs> about him, his, about his Camparina, just in case. Just, just going to have some. In my case, I'm going to make this one with three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. 
The other thing is I have to muddle this. I don't know where the heck my muddler went, but I do have this uh, Molina. We're going to use that. That's fine. And you don't have to go crazy. Uh, we're just going to crush these guys up by using the whole lime. We're getting all the oils from the peels, which is a whole yes. next level. We're sweeten that up. We had two ounces of cachaça. What's cachaça? Good. Ha ha. Cachaça. Good. I was going to say, I was a little bit worried because I know he sometimes does some weird stuff. So I was like, he's got to use cachaça or it is not. <laughs> it doesn't count. Is a liquor made from fermenting and distilling. It's a Brazilian rum. Of fresh pressed cane sugar. By the way, if you want to pick up Fogo, you will find it at Curiata, drink.curiata.com, friend of the show. Order from them. They will ship it straight to your house. I get a small piece of the action. So if you support them, you support the show. Here we go. Let's shake this up. It's so easy. It's such a simple drink. Um, I will say uh, there's at least there's one guy who orders it a lot uh, who comes to the restaurant. He only orders it from me, though. <laughs> <laughs> because I make it a little bit sweeter for him than it's supposed to be. He likes it a little bit sweeter than uh, than my coworker tends to make it. Actually, right now, uh, two of my three coworkers are Brazilian. I work in a Turkish restaurant. I work with Brazilians. I don't know. Actually, like four of my coworkers are Brazilian right now because the one of the prep cooks and the dishwasher are also Brazilian, and then two of the fe my fellow servers are Brazilian. <laughs> There's also a Turkish guy and two Turkish guys. One is in the kitchen, one's out front, and then Georgians own the restaurant. But like, it's like it's a weird little mix of uh, of people at my restaurant. Um, and I just, I just, I'm like, I win with this Camarini <laughs> drink because the guy who orders it the most likes it more from me. Boom, boom. A lot of times, this is built in the glass you're going to serve it in. I'm not going to do it that way. Yeah, I don't usually do it that I way like either. pummeling the hell out of it. Let's see here. We have one big ice cube we want to pull out because if I put that in there, it won't fit. And there it is. One caperina. Mm. They are good. Here we go. They are really good. Oh, 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 oh yeah. We've done it with, um, we've fucked around with it a little bit too at, uh, just for fun. Um, so like for Valentine's Day, for instance, we were doing them with like pomegranate, like as well. So like they were, they were cool. We called them like Persephone's promise or something like that. The notes in that are all over the place. You know, you get this bright, like... Cachaca is weird, just so you know. Metallic, kind of. Maybe even copper. I never connected that before. Ooh. And it's just precious like, earth metals. I like that they're like, they're talking about gasoline and stuff, and then copper. <laughs> through with this metal lime and sweet thing that resolves into oh god, where does it even go from there? You get some more bitterness out of the limes here because we have all the peel. That yes. also brings these extra oils that like I don't know, like Fruit Loops almost, like better Fruit Loops. These different kind of I wouldn't even say higher register flavors. They're like sideways flavors. Balanced by sweetness, that bracing cachaça, lime, and sugar kind of thing put together, it's a cold drink. It is a liquid air conditioning kind of cocktail. It is good, though. I do like a cachaça. I mean, I like cachaça. I like caipirinha. That's how simple it is. I'm not even juicing this. I'm just taking a lime, chopping it up, throwing yep. it in there. Boom. It's like you stuffed a bunch of angrier rum into a daiquiri. <laughs> It kind of is because, like I said, like cachaça is like a Brazilian rum. Like it's, and like a caipirinha is the uh, like national drink <laughs> of Brazil. Um, it's like a big deal. Um, and I was, I'm so proud of myself that like I saw at the beginning him putting the limes in, like in the thing, and I was like, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> Bam! I win. I'm the best detonated it. You can guess a drink from watching a bunch of limes. That remind me of like black tea, like an English breakfast kind of thing. Huh, that's it's interesting. It's very welcome. I'm enjoying it. It's sort of a finishing touch on there. It took me a long time in my journey of cocktails to get around the Cape Arania. And honestly, I didn't expect much. Blew my mind how much flavor, how much volume was in it. Cachaca has like a lot of levels. Cachaca has a bunch of different, like it does not taste the way you think it is going to taste at all. And I think that really elevates the drinks that it's used in because it is so much more interesting than most 
like rums that you can get here in America. It is much different. And again, he's right. It's grittier. Like everything about it is a little grittier and it's, it's different, but it is quite good. Like it's screaming in your face. Even grinding up the crushed ice with it is like a part of the experience. Oh, I, honestly, it's one of the greatest cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> we usually do use the that. granulated sugar, sugar, though, when we make it at sugar. work. Now we're coming to the drink that I usually give as the answer to what is your favorite cocktail? The Mai Tai. This is, I think, kind of... I don't of like Mai Tais. ...ultimate cocktail. Am I using that correctly? I don't know. Mai Tai is a much maligned cocktail. I think it's, it's I really like kind it. of been Ow. revived, saved. Throughout much of the 20th century, there was a drink that was called the Mai Tai that had every fruit juice imaginable and some rum in it. And they come in crazy colors, like blue, yes, they do. And red. And I usually see it in like a reddish like, pink. They should really be kind of straw yellow colored. And oh, interesting. Okay, you know, maybe I will like, like his version. The original Mai Tai, the Mai Tai as invented by Vic Bergeron. Actually, I can never remember if the Mai Tai is a Trader Vic's drink or... They claim, both claim to have, but Vic is broadly recognized as the creator. Okay. <laughs> Don the Beachcomber drink. I think it's a Don Beach drink. I don't think it's a Trader Vic's drink. I think there was a lawsuit about it. Yeah, it's a Don the Beach. Nope. Don Beach. He's wrong, apparently. There's been a lot of recipes for this that I've seen over the years. The thing of it is that Don the Beachcomber, when he was making it, he had access to Ray and Nephew 21-year rum. He's been wrong a lot. That. They don't even attempt to make that anymore. Have a drink when he's wrong. More, it's gone. He drank through the supply of that pretty yeah, early Good on job. <laughs> and, uh, has then spent a lot of his career looking for substitutions. To simulate that 21-year rum, I'm going to be using Appleton Estate 12 and Plantation, which is not really a Jamaican rum at all. I've been having these lately, and they're quite good like this. There's an argument to be made that I should be using Smith & Cross or something and keep it in Jamaica. That's a great idea, too. It's really kind of hard to go wrong, you know? So we're going to start Ugh. with one ounce of Orjat, which I recently made a batch. And okay. here's the thing, for a long time, I have been using uh, Small Hand Foods Orjat because I'm too lazy to make my own. I ran out the other day, so I had to make my own. And I like Small Hand Foods Orjat a lot. I think that that is the one to buy if you're buying an Orjat commercially available. And I hadn't made my own in years. And boy, I think I'm back to making my own. So one ounce of this. A lot of recipes will say I don't know what it is. half an ounce of Orjat and then a half an ounce or a quarter ounce of Simple. I say the orgeat is kind of like the main event here. Why are we shortening that up? If we're gonna make it sweet, let's make it sweet this way. Half an ounce of curacao. I like Pierre Ferrand dry curacao. One ounce of lime juice. And yes, you really should use fresh or you could use super juice, but don't buy that stuff that comes in the plastic line. And now we need our two ounces of rum. I will say he's right, but also the stuff in the plastic lime is still better than roses. Roses is the worst stuff you can get. I do prefer, like, like fresh squeezed lime juice, though. It is better. If I'm being super lazy at home, I do have one of the plastic limes, but usually I also have real limes. So we're going to do one ounce of our 12-year. It's funny. I've never, like, plantation. considered... <laughs> I've never considered, like, adding two different years together to make a bigger year. <laughs> I'm like, a, I'm like does the, I don't know if that scientifically works, but I kind of love it. Put that all in there. That's a Mai Tai. Let's get some ice. This drink is often served on crushed ice, powdered ice, whatever you want to call it, snow even. I'm a little bit lazy for that right now. Let's get Fair. this guy a shake. Grab yourself a nice ha. tiki mug, you tiki can use glass. A mug, or something from Visky. All of the glassware on how to drink is provided by Visky Glass. Visky. The official glassware provider of how to drink. If you love any of the glassware you see me using, you I do need to get some from Visky. I say that every time. Glassware. Use the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner. Use code How to Drink15 at checkout. You're going to get 15% off of your entire order at Visky. They are fantastic. I really do enjoy all of their products. So I check them out. really want some. So we've got our <laughs> here. There are two more things we need. One. Did I save it? I didn't. I'm an idiot. You well, fool. All right. I already threw it away. You're supposed to put the hull of the lime you squeezed on top of it upside down so it looks like an island. And then also a mint sprig so it looks like a palm tree. I think that the mint sprig is vital. I think that the island is optional. Let's get our mint in there. Some people yep. say you should give it a little slap to get yes. the oils released. Yes, they are correct. 
I usually like put it in my hand and like really like go up really hard on that crack. But it is so funny though, because I was again, like this new bartender, um, I was teaching him this. And there was a person sitting at the bar because we were doing like a mojito or something. And I was explaining like, okay, this is what you do. And, um, like he was like, Oh wait, really? And then like a second later, the person across the bar and him were like, Oh my God, I can smell it. And it's like, yeah, it works. You brute, like you beat that mint, <laughs> beat it up. And it, Oh my gosh, it improves the flavor so much. It really does. Like, you don't even have to like be muddling it into stuff anymore at that point. Like you, I still do for certain things like mojito. I really like a minty mojito, but like there are other things that it's like just supposed to be a garnish, you know, but it, Oh, just smack that shit. It's so good. I don't know how true that is. And it's true. The straw. It's very true. Do you want to size your straw to your mint sprig or vice versa so that your mint is maybe a little taller than your straw? You want, someone's nose to be up in that mint <laughs> when they have to go take a sip because you want the mint to really be you part want of the them drink. to smell it oh my god all right that is interesting i have never seen a mai tai like that i don't think that's interesting of orange and almond sweetness elevating this this rum this mellow funky banana rum Mm. It still doesn't sound the, good, though. These are very dangerous for me because I'll make one and then I'll make a few more and I will have a rip raw or not. I whoa, whoa! Perfect <laughs> because it is, again, it's a tiki drink and it is stripped down to essential elements. It's in such balance. It's not. I'm just so effing lazy. So, like, I will pour some whiskey over a big big ball of ice and throw in some like black walnut bitters and sometimes I'll smoke it but I'll just call it a day there and then I'll drink so many <laughs> it's so bad I'm like all I'm drinking is whiskey on the rock I've barely done anything to it I though I said like I said I have I will occasionally smoke it because I bought a smoke air because I have a problem <laughs> sweet at all it is. He says it's not, not sweet. Really tart. The lime and the sweetness I don't are know. right there in tension. That's interesting. Up against this oranginess, up against all of that rum. And you could use a funkier rum. I went mild here. I think you could have thrown a little Smith & Cross in there. You could even do like one ounce of your 12 year, half an ounce of Smith & Cross, and then like half an ounce of Ray and Nephew Overproof. You could do that, keep it all like three flavors of Jamaica, all turning the volume up all the way. You could put the funkiest, loudest rums you want in here. Stay away from Niagara Cole. That'd be a kind of a mistake, I think. And the drink will carry them and it will show them off very well. What is such a wonderful thing about these and a dangerous thing about these is that despite being spirit balanced, spirit forward is the wrong word, but spirit balanced, they are so easy to drink. They are just gone. <laughs> you will get someone in trouble with a Mai Tai. The drinks that I've gotten people in trouble with the most are my holiday punch that I only bring out around Thanksgiving. I bring it out for Halloween usually because it's at that time. And then I'll bring it out at like Thanksgiving, Christmas in the winter months. This drink has gotten people in so much trouble. I have like ruined nights <laughs> with this drink because it's really good. It just doesn't. But one problem people has, have is they try to keep up with me, which is not a great idea, especially with this beverage. So this drink that I make that is so dangerous for people, it is, uh, like I usually, I usually make a big vat of it at once. Um, but it is apple cider, like apple cider, not apple juice. Like, and I usually try to get the apple cider that I've gotten from like the actual orchard like we'll go apple picking or something and i will bring i will buy a jug of cider there um so apple cider and then it is fireball and then it is dark spiced rum the cheapest one is usually captain morgan so it's usually the one i go with um but it's that's it and cinnamon i'll usually put some cinnamon in there as well um if I'm making it a punch, I'll like slice up apples and chuck them in there. But like, it tastes like apple pie and you cannot 
like you can taste the cinnamony from the fireball you can but like you can't taste it's it's so dangerous and so good <laughs> And I have definitely, and I make it every year for the, for whatever party I'm going to. It, it usually disappears pretty quickly. Um, I usually have enough, you know, I get huge bottles of stuff so I can make two or three batches in a night. And I usually have to, um, it's, oh my God. <laughs> I feel so bad. So I'm like, I have to warn people like it's crazy strong because it is. It doesn't taste it, but it is. And, you know, if you want to make it, I say go for it. It's only three ingredients. And like I said, it's perfect fall. St strong, strong drink. This is like a bubblegum almond banana kind of thing in there without being overly sweet. The nose of the mint is so fresh and so bright and so clean. Clean. He's been singing a lot today. Such a wonderful joy. And they're so intention and so balanced and just so representative of their of their parts. You know, they really show off everything that goes into them. The curacao, the orchard, the lime, and the rum is all there, all present, all saying, how do you do? And yet being very, very, very approachable. I think it, it's... Uh, one of the the pinnacles of the craft, to be honest, a, a perfect so, a perfect cocktail. We're coming up to my last drink. Oh, the last one! For whatever reason, yeah, I thought I he was finished. To gin in here because I had a lot of rum and whiskey and a lot of rum and whiskey. I should try to get something tequila in here, but I'm not. And no vodka. A giant tequila fan. Like I said, this is this is vodka, this espresso martini here. It's strong. It's so strong. I think when I made it, I had like, because I, I brought some of it home from work because I don't have a ton of actual liquor right now. So <laughs> it was like a seven pour of vodka. I used Tito's. Um, it was like a six-ish pour of the Kahlua. Uh, I poured, you know, it was like a significant amount of coffee went into it as well. Uh Cause I made, um, cause we use it for our espresso martinis at work, the coffee, but I'd made too much. So I was just like, okay, here I go, this extra coffee. And then I got here and then I, when I uh, made this for home, uh, <laughs> I added creme de cacao, um, a bunch of that. So it's like, there's a non insignificant amount of alcohol in here. Cause I thought at first, oh, I'll have enough for two. But then I realized I have a glass that's the size of my face. So, huzzah. <laughs> I could see it. So it's, it's not enough for two. It was enough for one. Paloma. But I want I like a Paloma. And you know what? I don't mind that it's my own gin drink. We're going to make a rusty anchor. This is a drink I invented in an episode mm. forever ago where I was honoring the Golden Girls. So this is a mm. rusty anchor. I named it after the bar that Blanche hangs out in, the rusty anchor. It's a variation on a rusty nail. Forget variation. I think it's an improvement. On <laughs> okay. So this drink is built in the glass over ice. So I invented a drink as well. I just want to throw this into the ring. I'm, some people have seen this already because I've mentioned it a few times on various other channels. Um, but uh, it is, I, I can't find it anywhere else. Like I have, I have looked for it. <laughs> Um, for like a drink that's like similar. Um, and I really can't find one. So I think I invented this, um, but it is the, it's a peach palm teeny. So it is, uh, vodka. Um, it is peach schnapps, pomegranate liqueur, elderflower liqueur, and a little bit of lime juice, just shaken and poured into a martini glass. It is very good it's very it's sweet um but not like overly sweet like the like you can use less peach schnapps to get it a little bit less sweet uh add a little bit more lime to bring up the tartness like there's some adjustments you can make to it to make it to your taste but it's really good and i have seen pomegranate martinis i've seen like peach martinis i have not seen too many where they've put the two together or like I've seen one where they added like orange juice or something. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I haven't seen anything quite like the one I made. So if you want the drink that I invented <laughs> that I think is really good, um, 
it's and you can add a little bit of mint to it if you want but yeah just it's like two like one and a half to two ounces of vodka your choice of vodka it's really fine um it is like three quarters of an ounce of peach schnapps three quarters of an ounce of pomegranate it is like a quarter ounce of lime um and like a quarter to half an ounce of elderflower it's super good anyway i'll go on to the drink he made <laughs> So we're going to start with a half an ounce of lemon juice. I'm actually going to one ounce of Drambuie, which is a sweetened liqueur made from scotch. Two ounces of London Dry Gin. Honestly, if you're looking for like sort of a de facto standard London Dry tanker. Tank. Tank, tank is good. Out of that, like it was an old fashioned, right? Okay. You should be stirring something with lemon juice in it. On this one, you should. Then we do a float of Angostura bitters over the top. You could use a dasher and just dash, 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 dash. I think it's like 20 or 30 dashes of Ango. I'm that's a lot. Like a really solid float across the top here. Of course, that's our rust. Oh, I get it. Rusty anchor. I haven't had one of these in a minute, but I do recall quite loving them. Let's see. So first off, the nose is so... Herbal, Ango. <laughs> It calls to mind like a, a florist. I mean, it's so floral and, and just bright and fresh and and sweet. Those are good. Bracingly bitter, mated hmm. to okay. this herbal sweetness and the juniper notes that run through that fresh, bright pininess, which I know a lot of people don't like gin. But here, I like gin. gin is moderated in such a way as to be almost a background note. The Drambuie is providing sweetness and these herbal notes. The bitters are kind of tamping down and, and screaming over the top of the gin a little bit. Tangy, bright, citrusy, bitter, fresh, and floral, and herbal, and spice. All sorts all of stuff. Mace. My personality all traits. All <laughs> happening in there. What a fun drink. Mm. Definitely mm. one of my favorite drinks I've ever made on the show. It's a, something to spend some time with. It's I've been going forever. Slow sippa, which is, I think, unusual. There's not a lot of drinks, in my opinion, that are bright, ginny drinks that would be at home in sort of an afternoon garden party that you want to slow down to drink. This is okay. nothing like a Pimm's cup. This is nothing like a Collins. This is like an old fashioned, but with some of the flavor profile of those other drinks. I made it for the show. It was uh, just like one of those moments where I was like, oh shit, I did something good. It was a real happy accident. My notes suggest serving it with a garnish of cheesecake, as in a slice of cheesecake. I agree with that. I don't happen to have any cheesecake, but yep, if I had some, I would love some. <laughs> on how to drink, I've showed you my favorite cocktails, or at least my favorite cocktails from the 445 Dang. episodes or so of making this show as of today. Uh, some of these are immutable. I don't know if they would all stay on there forever, but the Mai Tai, the improved whiskey, and the Caperinia, they're never going anywhere. Those are absolute favorites. There's probably stuff that should be on this list that didn't make it on the list, but. Yeah, you only made five drinks, it's I'm fine. Only human. If you're new to cocktails, if you're interested in like, well, what are the pinnacles of the art? Here you go, try one of these. See if that sets you on fire. See if that lights a interest in you in pursuing this craft as just a personal art form, as something to play around with on the weekends, as something to do after work. A drink in moderation, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. Will do. Will Thanks, Greg. On another episode of How to Drink. Until then, good night and good luck. Nice. Good night and good I'm luck indeed. These are the best drink. Hey, hush. Get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, great. I always like him, but like I said, I know that this is a little bit more niche and it's a little bit different. I don't, I haven't done too much of uh, how to drink on this channel. I've done more of it on the Chicago Reacts channel, but in this case, I was like, you know what? I want to. I was like, I'm gonna pretend. I'm learning something. Um, so I, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you that uh, some of you stuck around for my drink that I made, um, and. I hope that you're as proud as a, uh, of me as I am for me guessing that Kakarina thing. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Um, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.